Anyway, yeah, can't hear you in three safe hours. Uh, when I talk about asses, of course, I do talk about donkeys. This is family friendly entertainment. <sighs> yeah, let's talk about this guy, for example. It's just one of many. Uh, this is Robert Bigelow, uh, actually, a guy who has a lot of hotels and got pretty rich and is trying to go into space. And he's going, he wants to go to the moon and. Uh, Mine here, Ion 3, and he made his very own, uh, obviously self drawn uh, cartoon uh, to show us the problem, supposedly. Uh, yeah, he is obviously afraid of the Chinese. Uh, he is an American, if you didn't guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, quite terrible, actually, uh, that cartoon. Yeah, Helium 3 is going to save the world and uh, essentially power everything. That's what a lot of the people uh, try and say. Yeah. Is that realistic or not? Actually, it's... it's <laughs> well, we have to see if uh, Helium 3 can save our ass. Uh, um, if you're interested, I see the whole presentation is this one. Yeah, Helium 3. He's not the only guy who's talking about Helium 3 a lot. Um, Isa's talking about it. A lot of articles are there. Isa's talking about it. In fact, if you look at the whole page, uh, there's exactly one... If you first look at the first couple of... Uh, Search results for the Ethereum 3 Apollo. Uh, there's one that is critical about it, and uh, very similarly, if you look at Ethereum 3 mining, um, there's a lot of hopeful uh, talk of Ethereum 3 powering the Earth uh, for 10,000 years at least, or whatever. Yeah, so it's a real thing, and at least and in terms of discussion, it's not so much a real thing in practice. And I'm going to show you why. Uh, helium-3 is, as you can see, an isotope of helium. It's a light isotope of helium with uh, just two protons and one neutron. And you can do nuclear fusion with it. Now, the hope is that you can do nuclear fusion with it that produces less radioactive waste. Some people say it produces no radioactive waste. That is not quite true because um, actually you, you want to fuse helium-3 with deuterium. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you, if you look at the reactions and uh, yeah, you can have a look at the Wikipedia page on nuclear fusion, obviously, but you can also go to some other sources. Uh, this one's free for download. You can have a look at it. And uh, you will find that there are many ways of uh, doing nuclear fusion. That's the one everybody is trying to go for right now because it's the easiest. And uh, this is an order of the most favorable ones. And now you might expect something like Helium-3 that's supposed to solve all of our energy problems to be somewhere on the top, but it's actually somewhere here. Uh, and that might already tell you it's maybe not the easiest thing in the world, especially considering that even the easiest one um, hasn't been done yet. So that's one major question mark, and it's actually the, sm the smallest problem in Helium-3, uh, after all. Um, to come back to radioactivity, the problem with radioactivity is the neutrons, um, neutrons interacting with other, with, uh, other matter can easily produce um, radioactive isotopes and thus radioactive waste. Um, this one looks promising. Uh, you have deuterium, helium-3, you get helium-4 and a proton. No neutrons involved. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, the problem is here with D. The deuterium can fuse with itself and because in this reactor, you will have deuterium and you will have helium-3 and you will not be able to just take the two of them and tell the deuterium atoms and the helium-3 atoms to uh, fuse with each other and, uh, and not 
let's say, a deuterium atom with another deuterium atom. Uh, you cannot tell them to do this. You will have both, and so you will get neutrons. You will get neutrons from the reaction of uh, deuterium producing helium-3 itself and a neutron, and you will get them because uh, you will produce tritium as well, and you will get this reaction as well, and thus also more neutrons. So it will never be free of neutrons, uh, no matter what people tell you. So I told you it's harder. Let's have a look at how much harder. Um, this is from the from the document I've showed you. Um, how much harder you can find this essentially here. Uh, and yeah, this is how much power you will get out of a given sized uh, reactor, provided that it works and you have uh, a proper um, fusion reaction going. Uh, you will get about 80 times as much energy out of the usual deuterium and tritium uh, reaction. No, almost 100 times as much energy compared to helium-3. So it's, it's almost 100 times as difficult to to build uh, a proper uh, a proper reactor for helium-3 fusion. And that's the easy problem. Um, and it's just physics. Maybe one day we will be able to, produ to build a fusion reactors uh, that are really small, that are incredibly powerful, and for whatever reason we will be able to do helium-3 fusion with a compact and economical reactor. So this may possibly be solved, just a matter of engineering. What is not a matter of engineering is uh, how much helium-3 there actually is. You have to get helium-3 in order to do helium-3 fusion. Um, and you can just use Google Scholar and yeah, in this case it's actually just the very first hit that you will get and it's helium-3. And uh, yeah, what you can find is those are the results of the uh, of um, soil samples taken from the Apollo missions, and if you have a look at this one, this is helium three abundance in parts per billion, uh, and this is a ten. This is not ten million parts per billion or something. It's ten. So this means that if you have uh, one. Well, let's say one billion ton tons of soil, you will get maybe 10 tons of helium-3. That's a major problem because nuclear fusion produces a lot of energy, uh, quite a lot, at least compared to regular fuels, but it's not unlimited. Uh, you can do the math and you will find that uh, uh, compared to, to uh, fission, uh, where you need about one ton of uranium in order to get, uh, in order to, uh, get one gigawatt of electricity per year, roughly, uh, you will need about one-eighth of that, of that mass in terms of helium-3 in order to get the same amount of electricity. So you still need about 120 kilograms of helium-3 in order to, uh, to run a nuclear power station for one year. And uh, if you have, let's be optimistic and say you take these uh, 10 per parts per billion and you're mining this stuff, well, uh, it takes about, you, you need about 10 million tons of soil, of lunar soil, in order to get the necessary amount of helium-3 to, to uh, have your power plant run for even one year. Now that's very similar to something that is going on uh, right in this area, and I can show this uh, on, on Google Maps quite easily. Uh, this is Leipzig, uh, we are somewhere here. Uh, all these lakes here, uh, those are not natural lakes. Uh, this is lignite mining. Uh, there are landmines, landmines, uh, even, no, not this one. Uh, this is a big one here. I'm actually from this little town here, so I know what this is all about. And you need about 10 million tons of lignite in order to run a similar, uh, a similar coal station. So essentially, when people are talking about mining, uh, Helium-3 on the moon and powering uh, power plants down here on Earth, 
what they suggest is well let's do coal something on the same scale as coal mining on the moon just in order to produce a little bit of helium 3 ship it back to earth do something that is a uh, nuclear fusion a kind of technology that we really we are really not quite able to pull off yet uh, and and save and uh, save our ass well uh, I like that that little ass that I've shown you and uh, I don't think that this way we can save our ass thank you